Hey guys, my name's Mitch. I um, want to make a video comparing and contrasting the um, differences between the ambient weather WS2000 and WS2902. Um, you know, I want to compare to see if getting one or the other is worth the price differences. Obviously the WS2000 is a good bit more than the other one, the 2902. So is it worth, is it worth making that jump? Is it worth getting that? That's all on you, but I'm going to talk about the differences between the two, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let y'all decide if you're watching this and wondering, should I get one or the other? Um, so uh, let's get right into it. Now before I start guys, I just want to say um, I do have a review video of the 2902, the WS Ambient Weather Station, uh, and it just kind of tells you where I put mine. <clears throat> where to put it when you're struggling to find a location stuff like that and um i do put a lot of these weather stations in my videos so if you could subscribe to support me that would be awesome guys i'd appreciate it but let's just jump right into it so this is my this is my uh, sensor array for my ws2902 ambient weather station uh, it's not in a good location at all um that's not really a big deal for me because um i'll explain why here in a second it's just on the fence um, uh, right between two houses, so the wind readings are not that great. Um, temp readings are just fine, and uh, rain readings are good. Um, right beside my uh, Kokoros uh, station, I just put this here, so I want to compare, you know, both readings. And uh, obviously, the, the Kokoros gauge is uh, pretty dead on, so this is where this station's sitting. Now, I put my WS2902 station right there and um i put the new station i got which is the ws2000 up there so that's where i'm getting data from you know to all my stuff from both but this is the one that i definitely pay attention to it's further up in the air gets better wind readings and that's the best place at my location that I can put something. So, you know, I'm not gonna go too deep into this. I got videos on this already. I don't know why y'all mainly watching, but I just wanna tell you, show you the locations of both of mine. The sensor arrays on these things are the exact same. There's no difference at all. So as far as readings, rainfall readings, the tipping gauge, the, the temperature, um, the, the wind, you know, the, the, there's no difference when it comes to that. But I want to show you the main difference, the biggest difference between these two that is um, that makes it the WS2000 so much more valuable than this one right here. All right, guys, so I've, I've come inside and um, I have both displays set up right here. Now, right at the dot, I'm sure you can tell an obvious difference between the two. This is the 2902 WS Ambient Weather Station display and this is the WS2000. Now, from first sight, obviously a huge difference. This one's more techy. Uh, it just looks better. And um, this one's the cheaper one, your 2902. And it, it just got your basic stuff on it. And you kind of have to push buttons to get what you want to see. If you're not looking at your uh, app, this is uh, Weather Underground right here. So, um, which I, I look at and use a lot, including the ambient weather site. So. Let's talk about the main differences here. Now, with this one, you have your outdoor temperature here, got your indoor temperature here, outdoor temperature here, indoor temperature there. So, with this display, the 2902, it reads the temperature off the actual display. It has a built-in thermometer, and um, it reads it here. So, right here, right where this is sitting, is 70.3 degrees. So. Uh, Fahrenheit, uh, Fahrenheit for you guys listening in other parts of the world or anything like that with this um, It's pumping out at 60. I don't know if you can really see it, but it's pumping out a 68.7 so I Don't know if it's wanting to zoom in good, but as you can tell 68.7 there so how it's getting that indoor temperature right there it comes with a separate remote thermometer and normally, you know, I, I, well, I, I put mine in my house because it was the only one that came with it, which is cool. Put it in my house. I'll make a short clip of that next. 
Um, it's uh, in my living room, so it's reading the temperature in my living room. This is my bedroom. So that's how it's getting that temperature. So first cool thing, obviously, is the display, right? So with, with the WS2000 display, it shows everything. You don't have to push buttons or anything like that. It shows you your max wind gust. It shows you everything right here. The rainfall, I, I love this setup here. Um, it, it just shows everything here. You don't have to you know, put, push a bunch of buttons. You, you got your high temperature here. Sorry if it's a little blurry, guys. It's just, it's just not zooming in very well. But And it shows your low temperature. It says 45.5. So it shows it here. It shows your lows and highs. Um, top wind gust. It's, you know, it, it just shows everything where you don't have to push a bunch of buttons. If you're one of the people who don't like using the internet, who'd like to go home and, and actually look at your stuff, you don't have it set up through, which I definitely recommend y'all do set it up with ambient weather at least so you can look at the highs and lows and how much rainfall you're getting from your house, which is really awesome. One of the most coolest perks of having a weather station is being able to look at information when you're away from your house. That is so, so cool. Ambient Weather actually has something where you can get text sent directly to you when you say you get over a tenth of an inch of rain, you get a certain wind gust, you, you get below a certain degree, you get above a certain degree. You can set up text messages to go straight to your phone and it, that is just one of the coolest things. Anyways, quick note, I'm sure some of you weather geeks out there like me are noticing the difference between the high and the low temperature if you just watch the first part of the video. I know there's there's not really a four degree difference. What happens is uh, my station on my roof, which is this one, the 2000, um, when the sun comes up in the mornings, especially in the spring and summertime, uh, the sunlight just blasts that station um, right when the sun's coming up, and then and then it levels off and it reads really good readings. But this one's kind of sitting, you know, between two houses, kind of in the shade right now. So, anyways, let's get back to it. So. Obviously, with the 2902 WS Ambient Weather Station, you kind of got to go down here and you got to see if I want to get put the temp. Does it's I probably barely can see it, but that says chill right there. So, this is the wind chill. You got to do this for the dew point here. And I love looking at dew points because it signals cold fronts and things like that. Here, um, dew points show up right here. You don't have to push nothing. So, you click this, shows the heat index right now. Again, um, shows the feels like I don't I don't know actually if it shows the heat index right there but it shows you it feels like so you know that pretty much when it's hot and humid it, that pretty much tells you it's you it's uh, the heat index is high but anyways so you go back and you go back to that so then you have to push on this on the ambient on the 2902 to get your highs and low temperatures you have to go down here to max min and you have to, you know, your high temperature 54.7 a day, low is 45.5, and you have to, you know, you have to push a bunch of buttons, and you know that's part of it being the cheaper station, which you know really isn't a big deal if you have it set up online. Um, rainfall, you have to kind of click through this to see how much you got for the week, for the month, um, total for the year, um, goes your rainfall rate, things like that for an event, and then goes back to day with with this display <clears throat> let's see if I can get close here with this display it shows all of it right there as you can tell it, you don't you don't have to flip through nothing um, so super cool man I, and I and I just got this and set it up yesterday I've had this one for almost two years now a long time it's held up very well but <clears throat> you see anything else that we can talk about here really that makes it that makes the display here really cool you know, obviously you can, another cool thing, and I actually have a couple more sensors on order off Amazon, so I, I can't really give you a great example of that, but I can tell you, you push channel here, let's see if you can see it, that little circle button that says CH, you can, you can click that, and when you get more thermometers to put around your house or around your, um, or, or inside, you can basically, um, click this and it cycles through all those locations of however many thermometers you can do up to eight extra ones outside of the one I believe that you got inside your um, inside your actual you know box for the weather station so you know that's that's really cool 
and um, you can click this and you change it to a white background, which I don't like as much, but you know, some people might go back to, to black there and um, click this and it kind of just turns it off and on. Uh, another cool thing that this display does is, you know, you click this, you can um, look at your indoor, outdoor max temperatures, all your maxes and your rainfall. If you're not looking at it, I'm sorry guys, if you're not looking at it, say, on uh, through Wi-Fi on the Ambient Weather website or um, Weather Underground or anything, you can look at it on here and it updates. I think I got mine set up at five minute intervals, I do and um, it lists everything here. You can look at it from here, graphs, awesome. So, so good stuff. So um, the coolest thing that I'm excited to set up is um, you go to settings right here. You scroll down to where it says, let's see, multi-channel sensor setup. So you push this and when you get a bunch of sensors, you can edit the names of your of your channels. It's channels, which is your your thermometers you got set in different places, and you can choose to register them, name them different things. Whether you're putting on the outside of a, a house or the side or the porch or whatever, you know it's just that's just really cool. And I'm excited to get extra thermometers and, and check that out because that is that is a really cool thing you can do. Because you know, let's face it, guys. You know when you sometimes depending on where you're putting it and you don't have a lot of options to put it just like I don't I got mine on the roof so in the summer it's hit we're in here in South Carolina it gets hot as Hades humid and the best place I have for a weather station is that place I showed you on my roof so even though it's seven eight foot off my roof the heat radiates off and shingles and skews the temperatures and you know by a degree or two sometimes three degrees so it kind of sucks in the summer and the where the sun angle depending on if there's enough wind going up under the the station or not to, to kind of remove the heat radiating off the roof you know you know you, you, it just gets skewed sometimes so um, it's good to have an extra sensor to put it in a shaded area um, that actually gets more accurate temperatures and you can cycle through that right here so um so with that being said if you don't care about that much this let me tell you something and I made a video about this station too because I'm not going to just hate on this station because I've had it for two years and I loved it this is the cheapest best station out there and I made a video about it um, you know if you just need something that's not super expensive um, depending on if you think $170, $180 for a really dang good weather station then and you're not trying to spend three hundred dollars it's a good weather station it really is so um you know i have mine set up through weather underground through all this stuff so you know it, it's it, it's a it's a, it's an awesome setup i have two now i'm excited to see where my sensors are going to go also wanted to add this this is the thermometer that comes with it um nothing much to it uh it tells you the temperature and the humidity and then reflects to that uh, WS2000. Um, so not much to that. Just want to make a short clip on what this looks like when it comes. One negative thing about this display, and um, it's something that I didn't like too much, is that it has to stay plugged in. And um, that's kind of odd to me that, that they couldn't make it where you unplug it like the other one, and uh, it, it still stay on, it just dims. But when you unplug this, it's off just like that so you know you, you plug it back it's not much to it it says starting and it, and it comes right back up it takes a minute to load all the information you go over here um this one you, you got right here and it's on and i can unplug it real quick hold this real quick on there i can unplug it real quick down here and it doesn't go off it just kind of it'll probably dim here for a second and uh, it kind of runs off the batteries on it um, so that's kind of one thing that's 
that's odd that did not come with that. There's no batteries on it when you unplug it. So when you unplug it and uh, the power goes out or something, I mean, it's off. And as you can tell, this is dimmed, but it's still on. So, I mean, that's just one, that's one downside of, of the better display is uh, there's no batteries to back it up when the power goes out. So this is the WS2902A on Amazon. Um, right now it's you know about 160 bucks plus tax or whatever shipping. So it's even cheaper than when I first bought it, about $20 cheaper. Great weather station, not that expensive. Um, if you're looking on the cheaper side, obviously that one. Then you got the WS2000. So this one's a lot more expensive, over $100 more expensive. So, you know, it's kind of up to you. So ultimately, what it comes down to is it is it worth spending an extra $120 or so on the W on this? And uh, same sensor array. There's no difference between that. There's no um, situation where you get any more accurate readings than the 2902. So, is it worth? that amount of money it's hard for me to really answer that because you know what <laughs> I got this one for free um, I got it for a present um, and uh, so you know it's hard for me to answer that because honestly I probably wouldn't have upgraded um, but if you love seeing all this displayed out like this and I love it I think it's awesome even though I, I don't hardly ever look at the displays but I think it just looks cool you know I think a lot of people would agree with me um, it, it just looks looks gnarly, man. <laughs> so, um, is it worth that awesome display and being able to have everything up here without pushing a bunch of buttons? Um, also, keep in mind, up to eight additional thermostat sensors that you can place anywhere. Um, obviously, you can't place them too far away, but you can place them throughout your property, throughout your home. Um, and uh, you can access uh, access all of that on the ambient weather site, um, remotely anywhere, you know, away from the house, anything like that. So, not a lot of stations like that have that. So that that that's a cool. That is that's an awesome extra thing you can do to get better accurate readings around your property and around your home. And, uh, so ultimately. That's your decision. I've kind of wrapped up the differences between the two. Um, is it worth spending an extra $130, $140? It's your decision. I would say, to me, probably I would lean on more on the no side. But there's nothing wrong with all the extra accessories on that WS2000. Um, definitely not. And I, you know, I, if I had an extra good bit of money, I would go for it. Um, I have both now, so um, I can tell you that um, it's gonna it's gonna be cool having having two weather stations. So, and that's about all I got, guys. Um, like I said, I just asked that you support me. Um, I, I put a lot, I put a lot of um, ambient weather stations in my videos, and um, I just asked you to subscribe. That would be awesome, guys. And um, this is a. Uh, these are cool. This one's cool. Check it out, man. I mean, that that is a cool, gnarly setup. But if you're just old school, you know, not necessarily old school, but don't don't care about all that. The sensor array is not different. There's no difference between the two. So um, same accurate readings depending on your location. So my mind's not accurate because it's uh, one's getting destroyed by sunlight, and one's not. So um, that's all I got, guys. I appreciate y'all watching, and I hope this helps you guys out a lot. Thanks.